Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very, very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And today, if you don't mind, I would very much like to continue on with our journey, our discussions, our discoveries, and our explorations with respect to the recent releases made by the Criterion Collection during this year of 2023. And that brings us to that title, which has been designated by Criterion at spine number 1178. And this is a work which is described as being from the year 2022. And the name of the filmmaker is Ruben Ostland. And the name of the film is... Triangle of Sadness. This is the work which is described as being from the year 2022, and it is from the filmmaker Ruben Östlund, and it is written by and directed by Ruben Östlund, and it is a very uh, captivating and surprising plot with a lot of wit and humor and a lot of a type of dry, acerbic, uh, uh, sarcastic, critical eye that's done in a very uh, funny and strange and surprising way. Uh, and in this film we have amongst the very many uh, great uh, cast of uh, players, we have people like Harris, Dickinson and Charlie Dean and Dolly De Leon and Woody Harrelson and others. And it is this work which is Triangle of Sadness. So Triangle of Sadness is released by the Criterion Collection in this release, which is employing the 4K UHD plus Blu-ray format option. And we'll talk a little bit about that later in this video. But before we do, let us talk a little bit about this film and the plot structure of this film and indeed it is a very a very intriguing work uh, it was my opportunity to watch this film uh, for the first time uh, with this criterion release and i must say i was really taken aback by its sort of audacity and raw humor and the uh, wry critical eye that it casts uh, upon uh, various, say, uh, expectations and uh, various uh, sorts of situations and a type of, of uh, almost cruel situational comedy that is taking as its uh, center point a type of critical eye regarding class and regarding uh, social media and regarding uh, a type of uh, empathy or sympathy or lack of empathy or lack of sympathy thereof and a type of, of uh, social political commentary intermixed with a very uh, funny uh, comedic uh, sense of style and pace that also has a lot of heft to it. Uh, that is Triangle of Sadness. So uh, in this uh, environment, we have a number of things going on. I think uh, one of the uh, ideas is that it's an ensemble piece, or it appears to be an ensemble piece, that opens up with uh, maybe focusing in on a particular couple, that is uh, Carl and Yaya. This is the Harris Dickinson and Charlie Dean characters, respectively. And we see already that they are uh, in... Uh, a type of interesting situation with regard to their own relationship. Perhaps it might be said on the one hand to be in a type of rocky situation or perhaps uh, the perspective of one side of the relationship is not necessarily shared by the other side of the relationship. And you throw into the mix there this idea of generational, say, concerns uh, intermixed with a sense of uh, sort of capitalistic tendencies that is fueled on by uh, the application of uh, social networking and social media and a type of social media generation uh, that is also trying, at least in the context of, say, uh, the uh, Carl character, uh, trying to find some kind of semblance of a, an emotional, uh, intimate dynamic to the relationship. 
uh, while uh, Yaya might be perceiving things in a slightly different fashion in terms of the importance of a relationship uh, in the context of uh, these generational concerns. Uh, or perhaps uh, there is uh, something more to it. Uh, uh, could there be something more to this uh, relationship? Perhaps there is, and that might be further a uh, part of the uh, the main dish of events, shall we say, when we get to uh, other parts of the film involving other casts of characters, uh, including the main characters that we met early on, or uh, and the situation involving this very posh luxury cruise uh, that has the passengers and also has the crew members. And also we have already this divide between the passengers and the crew. The passengers at least uh, seem to be coming from their own, say, pockets of uh, biographical information. They seem to be coming from a certain segment of class and wealth and privilege. And also throw into that mix a type of sarcastic, critical eye uh, that's cast upon uh, the various perspectives and viewpoints that they seem to be espousing. Uh, not only vis-a-vis themselves, but vis-a-vis the people around them, including the members of the cast, I'm sorry, the members of the crew of the, uh, the, the voyage, because here we have a type of power dynamic. The people who are the paying customers, the paying passengers, essentially giving orders to the members of the crew who uh, essentially must uh, uh, do their bidding to the very letter of their requests and orders to the point where it becomes almost this absurd surrealist comedy that becomes so extreme so as to show the fissures and the cracks in terms of this uh, class dynamic and indeed shall we say a class struggle uh, between say the uh, uh, the privileged and everyone else, in a manner of speaking. And again, set in the context of this luxury uh, cruise voyage. Well, were it to end there, I think we would have already a very robust set of dynamics within the drama. But my goodness, it certainly doesn't end there. And indeed, throw into the mix a great deal of plot twists and character dynamic arcs that are suddenly shifted and uh, turned off balance and in a way that really upends uh, the situations and then further upends those situations and then further upends those situations so as to really call into uh, the point of examination this this very idea of class dynamics and uh, uh, the idea of sympathy and empathy and the context of of a type of exterior show versus uh, sort of an interior fortitude and what is uh, really the truth as to uh, human relationships and what is really the 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 uh, uh, the farce and what is really the uh, uh, the the fake or the artificial and uh, that all comes to the fore in a very sudden and a very abrupt and indeed quite a a uh, a plot driven way that can also be said to be a type of of uh, uh, catastrophe uh, level uh, maybe to the point of in terms of a metaphor a type of revolutionary upheaval in a metaphorical sense of that term uh, and then creating a type of uh, equilibrium uh, but that equilibrium also brings with it its own sets of concerns and issues and perhaps dilemmas that further, say, augment or further uh, suggest a type of, of uh, uh, inherent, say, uh, human uh, or constant uh, human conflict. Uh, and those conflicts uh, maybe have their root causes in something innately within us, a type of emotional state of being or state of mind, uh, whether it be uh, a lust or desire or a type of, of a, a need for survival or instinct for survival or betrayal or uh, the impulse to lie or the impulse to uh, make friends and to be in a gathering and, and uh, those sorts of things. And those sorts of, say, fundamental, elemental aspects of human nature really come to the fore upon the establishment in this very catastrophic way. 
of a new set of uh, a new standard of equilibrium, shall we say? And so it's all set forth in the context of this cruise luxury cruise voyage. It's all set forth in the context of this network of passengers that we meet and the crew that we meet, and also uh, the captain and others. And so uh, there are all these dynamics that are then shifted and uh, upended and uh, thrown off balance in a way that is very absurd. That's very witty. That's very funny. That's very dark. I can turn uh, quite wicked and quite cruel in its comedy or in terms of the uh, very funny sets of, uh, say, uh, 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 situations and circumstances that, as I say, uh, really uh, suggest a a type of um, almost disgusting uh, uh, or maybe even morbid or maybe even a type of cruel shifting eye that, again, uh, calls into question uh, this idea of power dynamics and relationships and uh, the idea of who is in control of what and uh, what is the basis of that control, what is the basis of that power, and what happens uh, and how delicate and how, say, um, uh, how uh, unnerving uh, would the situation be if that power dynamic or that uh, control dynamic were to shift all of a sudden uh, in a way that is uh, very, say, sudden and it's very abrupt, but also very much filled with a type of metaphorical meaning uh, that's also very, very witty and very funny and very shocking and absurd and surreal all at once. Wow, what a film this is. Triangle of Sadness, Ruben Usland. So as I say, I was, uh, I had the great opportunity to catch up with this work upon this Criterion release and I had heard a lot about this uh, film, but I had, didn't get a chance to see it upon its initial release say, in theaters. So uh, I didn't know exactly uh, what uh, I, I, I didn't see the film, so I didn't I couldn't keep up with those sorts of detailed conversations until I saw the film uh, in the context of this release. And my goodness, I was really blown away. I was very much uh, taken with it. I was found, I found myself disgusted. I found myself uh, grossed out. And I found myself also laughing out loud. I found myself really puzzled and startled by the sudden turns and twists. And I found myself also um, maybe uh, finding myself uh, 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 somewhat uh, trying to distance myself with a number of the characters that I tried to uh, uh, convince myself as being very distant from my own uh, maybe personal set of uh, uh, life examples or life uh, situations. But maybe I come to realize that there might be some uh, instances of a type of universal or um, accessible uh, uh, examination of human relationships. Uh, This idea of jealousy, this idea of, of a type of urge or instinct to want to control and this idea of trying to uh, take advantage of certain situations or maybe trying to uh, wrestle with the concept of being controlled or wrestle with the concept of the instinct to want to control, etc., etc. And then you take that uh, maybe uh, instinct, uh, instinctive type of approach and you apply it to uh, issues of class and uh, 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 type of conspicuous consumption and wealth, and also the uh, a current generational status of uh, social media and uh, presence and identity via social media, a type of externalized uh, means of uh, of uh, 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 setting forth a sense of identity, and how true that is, especially when uh, it is tested with some kind of a catastrophic event like this. So, uh, through those avenues, I found the film to be very, very accessible. And uh, while I I tried to uh, see myself uh, in a distance from the characters, I found myself really consumed in a great way with their stories and indeed uh, their uh, attempts to try to confront these issues in their own maybe unique and individualized ways. Sometimes they might be said to be succeeding, sometimes uh, not, but whatever the case may be, uh, I found myself totally absorbed and totally uh, uh, laughing and uh, uh, being uh, suddenly uh, surprised and uh, delighted and uh, disgusted all at once. My goodness, what a what a film this is! And uh, I had uh, I was I felt so entertained, and also I felt uh, thoroughly. Um, uh, I felt like it was a, a very sort of a, a profound experience in terms of uh, current uh, generational and uh, class societal issues, uh, while being a very funny and witty and uh, gross and challenging work all at once. 
very, very uh, great stuff indeed, and very memorable indeed. Uh, this is the work which is from Ruben Östlund, and it is Triangle of Sadness. The Criterion Collection has released this work, Triangle of Sadness, at spine number 1178. And right here is the 4K UHD plus Blu-ray combo edition, which means we have two discs. One which is the 4K UHD disc and the other is the Blu-ray. And we have this plastic casing with the stacking mechanism on this side, which we have seen in previous uh, similarly situated Criterion 4K UHD Blu-ray releases. And then on this side, we would have the leaflet or the fold-out. Uh, insert which I've taken the liberty of removing prior to the start of recording this video discussion but it would go uh, in here uh, in the interior compartment of this plastic casing and uh, the back indicates new 4k digital master approved by director Ruben Usland with 5.1 surround DTS HD master audio soundtrack and one 4k UHD disc of the film and one blu-ray with the film and special features so uh, I looked at the leaflet and uh, I'm looking at it right now and I cannot find any note or any description about the master or the transfer. Um, I do see for example disc mastering uh, Pixelogic Media, an indication there, and I see other uh, production credits and special thanks section, But, and I see the essay, which we'll talk about uh, in a little bit, but apart from those uh, writing uh, comments, I cannot see any indication or any description of the master uh, or the transfer materials, and so I'm relying on uh, for example, what's uh, on the back casing here. So uh, that's uh, that's very interesting to me. Again, maybe I'm missing it. Maybe it's somewhere and I just can't find it. But as we know, oftentimes Criterion does include some written note about the transfer of the materials. But here I cannot find any. So I wonder why that is. But in any event, yes, it's a work which is from 2022. And uh, and this is my first time watching it. So there is a sheen and there is a type of, of um, uh, uh, almost a... Um, uh, almost a type of uh, uh, brightness to the work uh, that I think is uh, applied on purpose to suggest a type of artificiality, uh, which I think is very inherent in the plot details themselves. Again, I don't want to go into too many uh, details lest I spoil it for for those who have not yet seen the film. So uh, for the benefit of those who have not yet seen the work, I'll try to uh, keep my comments as ambiguous as possible. But the point is that I think there is a type of sheen to the look of the film, which I think is done on purpose, and you apply to that uh, the various aspects of, say, uh, wealth and privilege and, and class struggle and uh, the artificiality of uh, externalities as augmented by uh, social media uh, and the like and generational differences and how that's all upended in a, in a very abrupt and sudden way, as I was trying to indicate earlier. And I think that comes through very nicely in the way it's shot and the way it's handled. So while I don't admit or while I don't claim to have any type of expertise when it comes to, say, uh, this work as it might have appeared in the theater, because I've never had the privilege of seeing this in the movie theater, or anything like that, but uh, the way it looked to me, it felt uh, it felt like a very uh, a satisfying presentation, both in terms of looks and sound. So I had no issue with it. Uh, I saw the the film using the 4K UHD disc, and then I saw the work again uh, relying on the Blu-ray disc. So I was very pleased with either option. And uh, again, uh, coming from my vantage point, watching it uh, for the first time and then rewatching it again uh, on the occasion of uh, this great release from Criterion, uh, I was uh, thoroughly uh, engaged and entertained uh, with the presentation as we find it on either of these discs. Now let us turn our attention to what can be found in the context of the supplements, uh, the supplemental materials. So, uh, like with uh, uh, many other uh, Criterion 4K UHD and Blu-ray release, this film, or this release, Triangle of Sadness, uh, the film can be seen either using the 4K disc or the Blu-ray disc. But the Blu-ray disc has the uh, added, say, uh, benefit of also included with it the supplements. And so, what supplements do we have in terms of Triangle of Sadness? First up, we have a discussion between Ruben Uslan and uh, Johan uh, Jonasson, and this is described as being from 2022. It's approximately 19 minutes, and uh, it's given the subtitle of Part 4, 
Ruben and Johan, and I like that part four. It's, it's using a type of style or a, a, a structural device uh, that is reminiscent of how the film itself is structured. So that's, that's a very clever uh, detail there. And so here is a discussion uh, between the two of them and where Ruben Uslan is given the opportunity to talk about uh, the starting point of this work uh, and how uh, there is this, the idea of constructs and a dilemma, which is very similar to works that he uh, made uh, previously, you know, uh, references made to square or force majeure, etc. And I, I found it very fascinating, too, that there is a, a, a through line of continuity that he is establishing here in terms of this idea of, of a dilemma or a catastrophe or some kind of centralized event that seems to serve as a means of the catalyst that rocks or shakes or shakes up uh, the the very delicate and very sensitive, say, veneer or the outer covering or the outer shell. Uh, without such event, the outer shell would continue to perhaps continue with the artifice or the lie. Uh, but that central event uh, that occurs, it rocks and shakes uh, to the very core all the uh, sensibilities and uh, conceptions and uh, the way in which people identify uh, themselves. And that uh, way of destroying these uh, identifiers is really, I think, uh, the case to be made for the uh, th through line of continuity, even up to this work triangle, triangle of sadness, excuse me. So um, I really found that very, uh, very impressive indeed. And also the discussion of how this is uh, taking place using very directly this idea of uh, social media. And also uh, Ruben Uslan makes mention of, say, the Me Too movement and also the idea of trying to uh, establish or enable uh, modern, what he calls modern sensibilities. Uh, and uh, this idea of the, uh, the way in which uh, the environmental concerns uh, tend to creep in as well in very, very direct ways and also very metaphorical ways. Uh, as the uh, plot progresses throughout the film, and I'm speaking of Triangle of Sadness here, so I found that to be very, uh, a very uh, fascinating way of uh, approaching and describing uh, and analyzing and interpreting the work. Um, and also there's this uh, notion, of course, of, of uh, classes and class structures, and uh, also what Ruben Uslan describes is uh, the idea of going against expectations, and I found this to be a very interesting way of telling the story because, uh, for example... Uh, there are some characters in this film that we meet who, due to their backgrounds or due to their, say, uh, societal positions, uh, are set up in a way that would inherently make us the viewer or make me the viewer uh, be antagonistic uh, towards them, not sympathize with them, cast them in a type of villainous light uh, in, a, in, in one way of putting it. But what Ruben Uslan does uh, very interestingly is uh, he instead constructs his characters in a way that make them very, say, likable and very approachable and friendly, even though we realize that their backgrounds or biographies uh, have this uh, way of making us want to root against them, if you know what I mean. And so uh, that type of, of uh, going against expectations or really putting us off balance, uh, uh, keeping us uh, on the lookout for something that would uh, maybe make us think one way or maybe expect one thing but then uh, totally upend those expectations and take us on a completely different route. I feel like that is a, uh, a real great trait of this work and I feel like that's uh, one of the great sources of the, maybe the fun and thrill and the uh, and the sort of WTF uh, ex the WTF types of feelings that go through my mind as I'm watching this. So I really like that that expression. Also, Ruben Uslan makes reference to other filmmakers, such as Ingmar Bergman, and uh, he makes reference to the fact that uh, how time is treated in film, in cinema, and how Ingmar Bergman, Ingmar Bergman excuse me, uh, really took great care in trying to uh, value and and uh, uh, represent uh, the type of perception of time. And this idea, uh, this Bergman idea of a minute is a very long time. And that, I think, is so apropos because we also get a sense here of how time affects things, how moments seem to linger, and those moments almost in a very agonizing way linger and linger and linger. And during that time, we see people maybe unmoved or perhaps uh, people whose lives and whose perceptions are moved in a uh, almost a gargantuan 
uh, and uh, maybe uh, 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 irreversible type of way. So that type of, of static, uh, static uh, placement or uh, dynamic change. I think is a sort of root cause of what one might call the class struggle and revolution, uh, which I think is, uh, again, a term that I use both in terms of its uh, class uh, connotations as well as its almost its uh, stylistic or perhaps even uh, uh, artistic um, uh, the way it can be applied in terms of the, uh, the clash, conflict, and destructive elements that lead to something else, something new. Uh, and so that uh, can be applied in a sort of social political context. It also can be applied in a type of, of uh, a creative or destructive process, whatever the case may be. And I think that idea of revolution is so inherent in this work, uh, uh, Triangle of Sadness. And I think that idea of revolution is also linked very cleverly to this notion of time and the perception of time. A lot can happen in a minute. A minute is a very long time indeed. So for those and other reasons, I think uh, this conversation uh, is really quite wonderful. So uh, please check it out if you can. I learned very, I learned a lot about this uh, and um, uh, it was very, uh, very illuminating indeed. Uh, this is a conversation from 2022, approximately 19 minutes. And that's not all, because then we have a um, another uh, a supplement, which is uh, fr uh, from Platform Production from 2022. And this is called Eric the Extra. And Eric the Extra, uh, the, the name Eric here is referring to the producer, or one of the producers, uh, Eric uh, Hemendorf. And uh, this is approximately 15 minutes. And this is very uh, cool, because uh, we understand that Eric Hemendorf uh, serves as the producer. Also, he serves as, as someone who is part of the, the cast, as a type of extra, uh, or maybe an extra with a very interesting role. And it, it has, uh, and this supplement is essentially showing the, uh, the uh, production and uh, the shooting of this, uh, is this uh, event. It's almost central event in the film, and we have Eric's role in this uh, in a type of hallway or, or stairway, stairwell situation as a lot of chaotic things are happening. And so, uh, again, I don't want to go into too much detail because it's part of the plot and it's part of the surprise, but here we have the behind-the-scenes uh, production details of how Eric, the extra, is uh, dealing with the situation of uh, being part of the scene that involves a lot of special effects, involves a lot of movement, involves a lot of physicality, uh, and it's also a very humorous scene. It's also very, as I say, uh, uh, it's a very eventful scene as well. And to see all the cast, uh, see all the, the, excuse me, the crew handling the situation, uh, seeing all the various, say, setups that are involved, the time that is involved, etc., uh, and seeing also uh, a key member of the, of the production crew, the producer, also serving in this capacity uh, as an extra. And wow, what a great supplement this is. It was very funny and very, very clever as well. Uh, so here is Eric the Extra, uh, approximately 15 minutes. And next, continuing on, we have a visual effects demonstration supplement. This is also from Platform Production, uh, also from 2022. This is approximately six minutes, and I can describe this as being a type of montage of special effects shots of various examples throughout the film. And this is really quite, uh, quite something, because I didn't realize uh, until I saw this supplement just how many special effects shots uh, were involved in the making of this. So uh, to see the layering of special effects, uh, even details which one wouldn't realize, or I wouldn't think immediately, would be special effects shots. You know, I sometimes think in my mind, special effects shots involve things that are very obviously, like uh, 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 things that are uh, quite uh, extraordinary or that sort of thing. Well, here we have special effects demonstrations that do involve the quote-unquote extraordinary events, but also special effects that are uh, used to, uh, uh, to elaborate upon the quote-unquote ordinary which I found to be also a really fascinating way of, of layering a scene uh, with visual cues and styles that when you look at the film, or when I looked at the film, I didn't realize I was seeing a special effect, but then I see this visual uh, demonstration, I say, oh my goodness, that's a special effect, oh, that's really interesting. 
And so uh, to see that uh, application of this technology in this way, and it's done, uh, I would say, in this, in this way that it, on the one hand, it has a seamless quality to it, which is great. But on the other hand, there are moments when I think it's meant on purpose to call attention to itself. Again, this idea of a type of surface sheen. Uh, that is meant to evoke or suggest uh, a type of innate artificiality to the proceedings. Uh, sometimes that exists, and, and in the other moments when it's invisible. So I like that balance between these different sensibilities. Uh, uh, and it's on display in the visual uh, effects demonstration. A really fascinating stuff. Uh, this is, again, approximately six minutes, so please check it out if you can. And then the supplements continue on with the uh, deleted scenes section. Uh, this is approximately 12 minutes, so there are a number of deleted scenes. And um, uh, the uh, I, at least when I checked it, I didn't see any chapter movement. So I think it's just one, um, you know, you, I, I couldn't move from scene to scene to scene. It was just one continuous thing for him. But that was okay because uh, it was an interesting way to see certain uh, plot uh, elements uh, further developed again in the deleted scene section. So I don't want to elaborate too much upon them again. I want to, for the benefit of those, uh, for those, uh, my friends who have not yet seen this uh, film. So the deleted scene section is there. It's very fascinating stuff. And then the supplements round themselves out with the inclusion of a trailer. So that is the uh, the gist or the crux of the matter when it comes to the supplements that can be found here. So I would say that, um, again, coming uh, to this film for the first time, I learned a lot already from watching these. Uh, and I was uh, really curious for more. I thought, oh, it, it would have been nice to see some other uh, supplements included. Maybe, for example, uh, a commentary track. It would have been really cool to have a commentary track. Uh, and maybe with uh, Ruben Ostland and others, that would have been really interesting, or maybe members of the cast and crew, that would have been really interesting, or maybe other supplements involving the cast and crew uh, and the like, because I found myself really wanting to know more about uh, the other participants uh, in front of and behind the camera. So, And I read uh, a little bit about some of the circumstances involved uh, regarding some of the actors, and it was uh, 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 really... Um, uh, there are some uh, uh, aspects of uh, some of uh, uh, these stories and uh, these background information that I found myself really compelled by and really wanted to learn more about. And so, uh, uh, so, uh, but in any event, it would have been nice to have had other supplements included. But again, uh, for the benefit of say someone like myself who has not seen this film or was watching this film for the first time, I found what was included here to be very, very helpful and very uh, illustri illustrative of uh, the production stories and the the, con the concept and the conceit and the genesis of this uh, film, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I found them to be very, very helpful indeed. So uh, these are uh, the supplements that can be included with Triangle of Sadness from Criterion. And now to uh, conclude uh, our conversation about this criterion release, let us talk about the packaging and uh, fold-out and writing uh, and other details. So once again, uh, let me show the inside here. So the two discs are here, the Blu-ray and the 4K UHD disc. And if I were to remove the disc here, I note that there doesn't seem to be any noticeable difference, perhaps, uh, in terms of the Blu-ray look and the uh, 4K UHD look. Although I, I would say that maybe, uh, and I'm, the 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 color or the tint to the uh, wording of Triangle of Sadness as it appears on the Blu-ray. Uh, excuse me. There you go. Maybe you can see it has a type of of uh, slightly beige or uh, off-white look to it in terms of the Blu-ray. Whereas with the uh, with the 4K, it has a, a type of a sharper, whiter. Uh, color to the font. I don't know if that was done on purpose or not, but in any event, that seems to be a, a one of uh, the subtle differences as well as the, the wording Blu-ray versus 4K UHD, but uh, it's a very interesting uh, design in terms of the environment and the, the, the water, etc. Oh, I should say here, that's the back here uh, as well, and it's in this plastic casing, and we have on the cover a, a depiction of water or some kind of liquid or water element, and what appears to be a hand grenade. And so, uh, yes, very uh, interesting uh, choice for uh, an, an element to be used at the tr uh, for the cover art. And I would say this is very emblematic of what the film is about. So uh, something that is about to explode. 
I think that's very apropos indeed. And so I should say too that this artwork design element is continued on throughout the inside of the foldout right here. So uh, very interesting uh, depictions of uh, certain key members of the cast. Uh, key characters here, or uh, uh, some of the key characters of this uh, very exciting work. Uh, I should point out that the art is accredited to art director Sarah Habibi, Eric Skillman, cover designer Haley Turnbull. And uh, also I should say that the insert uh, is a fold-out type, and uh, I am not a fan of the fold-out type. I wish the Criterion could have given us the staple booklet, but that's okay here. Um, you know, not, uh, uh, again, to approach it from a glass half full perspective. Uh, we have, again, the interesting, uh, uh, neat little depictions of uh, certain uh, characters, as well as the essay. And this is by A.S. Hamra, and it's called The Captain's Dinner is Coming Up. <laughs> I like that title very much. And it's a great title for a great essay. Uh, A.S. Hamra's essay is really wonderful, and it's uh, all-encompassing, and it has a wide scope and very, very well written. Uh, my strong suggestion is, like with every other essay, uh, please, I strongly suggest that you watch the film first, and then after you've seen the film, you can go ahead and read this great essay. Again, The Captain's Dinner is Coming Up. Yes, coming up indeed. So... Uh, this is uh, this is just uh, my general uh, take on this Criterion release, Triangle of Sadness. It would have been interesting to have seen more supplements included, but what we have is a great doorway into uh, the insights of the filmmaker Ruben Uslan in terms of the creation of this work as well as other uh, uh, aspects of the production including the visual effects, etc., which is a very interesting and uh, quite eye-opening uh, uh, look into uh, the, uh, 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 the application of technology and, and the creation of these scenes that make up the, the film overall writ large. So, uh, and what a film this is, Triangle of Sadness. Again, my first time watching this upon this Criterion release, and my goodness, my goodness, what a experience, what a treat this is. Uh, shock and awe revolution, destruction, explosions, and uh, the elements uh, fundamentally rendered and the expectation of building things back up from scratch and whether that can happen or not. Uh, only time will tell or uh, one can see the progression or evolution or uh, uh, destruction, whatever the case may be of these and other sensibilities as one watches the film and perhaps uh, can be disgusted and recoil in horror uh, and surprised and shocked and uh, also uh, be very uh, amused and uh, uh, laughing along the way in terms of the, the comedy, the subtleties, the absurdities and the chaos uh, that are all part of this very entertaining and very engaging work from Ruben Usland. It is triangle of sadness okay my dear friends so that's it for now and so until we meet again please be happy and healthy and well and please keep on watching a lot of great 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 movies so until the next video my dear friends stay strong stay safe and cheers <laughs>